Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we are here to start a new book. This is a major book. It really took a lot of my time to prepare, to research, and to prepare for this uh, class and the subsequent weeks. We are entering into a section of prophecy. And so from Isaiah to the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi, we are looking and we're going to study about the prophets and what they have recorded for us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah is considered the evangelist of the Old Testament, the, the prophet of the prophets. Of course, of course, top of the list is our Lord Jesus. But in the flesh, Isaiah is considered the prophet of the prophets. And this is one book that has got more about our Lord Jesus Christ than any other book and quoted the most in the New Testament. And really, it is going to be a, a great uh, uh, time for us to, to digest this, to, to, to study this and find application. There is so much. I have preached quite a few times on the book of Isaiah. Uh, but most, most uh, ordinary believers would only remember Isaiah 53, right? Yeah, he was stricken, you know, he was tried by his stripes, we are healed, and, and, and so on and so forth. Or the other one, you know, uh, his name shall be called Emmanuel. These are the few, and then the other one, Isaiah 14, 31. Those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. But there is so much that you can find and derive from the book of Isaiah. And we will endeavor to do this by the grace of God. So let's commit this time to the Lord. Father, we come before you with gratefulness, with thanksgiving, with joy even in our hearts. This morning, Lord, for your blessing upon Singapore that you have granted us even our first gold medal even through this swimmer Joseph school. And Lord, now we calm our minds and our hearts to wait upon you because we are looking into history and yet looking into the future. Lord, all that you have written for us in the past, they all point to the future, even to the person of Jesus Christ. And through the pages of uh, the book of Isaiah, Lord, speak to us, reveal to us, that we may find applications even in our walk with you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, looking at the notes, if you have downloaded, um, these prophets were men raised by God uh, during this period, uh, that period then, when you know the kings were not exactly fulfilling their roles kings have an authority over the people over the nation that god can speak to them but they were not exactly the best channel which god could go through well of course there were some good kings but the majority you know as well uh, most of them bad kings evil kings okay so there were also priests Priests represent the people before God. But as we have studied, there were also some priests who compromised. And not exactly a very effective channel for the word of God to be <coughs> communicated to the people. So God raised men. Men who would represent Him. Priests represent the people before God. And the prophets represent God before men. So they echo the words of God. Secondly, they spoke of events both in the future. We think of events, you know, when, when they make predictions and prophecies, it's about the future. But it is also something that happened in their immediate future. So a prophet would say something, would prophesy. It will happen maybe during the lifetime of this hearers or within that, that, uh, this immediate future. But it also points to a few hundred years later. 
the book of Isaiah was written like 750 years before Christ came and the events that came to pass in the New Testament when Jesus came were all prophesied 750 years ago then during Isaiah's time so we can look at Deuteronomy 18 What did God say about prophets and prophecies? 18, 20 to 22. Actually, I, I really enjoy introductions. Yeah, some people say, hey, why don't you just get straight to the book? <laughs> but if you don't know the history, you don't know the background, um, it is just like reading three chapters in the morning, three chapters in the evening. I just want to get through the book and finish the book in one year or the whole Bible. We be one the chance. So, Deuteronomy 18, 20, verse 20. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. Very serious. False prophet, you will be stoned to death. But today we have prophets who come along and say, Christ will come and it will rain on this evening and, and this and that. Hey, if this is Old Testament, you'll be stoned to death. But let me tell you, you're not accountable to us. You're accountable to God whom you claim to represent who has given you the word. God will say, I didn't give you the word. Yeah? I never asked you to be a weather forecast person. You know? Anyway, Verse 21. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not come, does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. So on the reverse, then it means the prophet who spoke in the name of the Lord, all shall come to pass. Not maybe, not whatever excuse you can offer, but it shall come to pass. So, thirdly, the correct perspective of the kingdom can be gained through the eyes of the Old Testament prophets. Even in the New Testament, the Apostle Peter pointed back, refer us back to the Old Testament prophets and they are relevant to him and should be and must be to us. So 1 Peter chapter 1, 10 and 11. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched. This is referring to the Old Testament prophets. The Old Testament prophets have inquired and searched carefully who prophesies of the grace that would come to you, searching what and or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and to the glories that would follow. And all this was done what? Beforehand before the events took place. And Peter attests to that, the accuracy of the prophets. One more, Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 15 to 21. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 15 to 21. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His majesty. So he was talking about his time together with the fellow disciples around Jesus. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son, 
in whom I am well pleased. And this was spoken after Jesus came out from the water of baptism. And we heard the voice which came from heaven, which we were with him on the holy mountain. And so, that was the transfiguration of Christ. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. So whatever prophetic word they had, Peter and the disciples of the Messiah, they were confirmed by this. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture or is of any private interpretation. But, no, for prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And Isaiah is one of the holy men, moved by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Now, I made a lot of reference from, uh, I, I took a lot of reference from the book written by David Pawson. To me, one of the best teachers, expounders of the Word of God. So, introduction to Isaiah. Isaiah was mentioned many times. So, if you go back and count about 52 times in the Bible. Isaiah means what? Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh is salvation. Name your child, you know. God is salvation. So the father, the father had, you know, a, a, a role to play in naming the child. Don't name the child like Nabal, one of those that David wanted to kill. Yeah. Nabal is a fool. Why would you name your child? But it was so. And Isaiah is one of the five major prophets. Who are they? The five, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentation. Uh, lamentation? No, lamentation is written by Jeremiah. Okay. Yeah. So Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Well, I think what they mean is five uh, major books of prophecy. Now, let me tell you, all the prophets were major there wasn't any major and minor, one sergeant, one corporal, or private sergeant. No. They were all major. It is they were categorized by the length of their book. So those who wrote a lot of chapters. Now when it was first written, it was one essay. It wasn't divided into books and so on. But those of longer length, they were categorized under major. Shorter length, shorter essays, shorter prophecies, minor books of prophecy, minor prophets. As I mentioned at the beginning, Isaiah, he, he was considered the evangelist of the Old Testament. Why? Because he wasn't prophesying about weather, about this, about He was pointing to Jesus Christ. And when we go out and evangelize, what do we do? Our main motive, objective is to preach Jesus and Him crucified. And through Him, there shall be salvation. And Isaiah in his book, in his prophecies, pointed us in that direction. The evangelist of the Old Testament. Prophet of the future. All this pointed to the time when Jesus shall come. And not only that, until the last day about the new kingdom, the new heaven, the new earth, and so on. If you read all the way to Isaiah chapter 66, it points to the new heaven, the new earth. It points to the future, the millennium. It is considered the fifth gospel. We all know, wow, four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But the gospel before the gospels, because those four are found in the New Testament, but there is one gospel in the Old Testament. Here. The gospel before the gospel. They call it the fifth gospel. 
it Christocentric means the focus, the centrality of this is about Christ. And in this book of Isaiah, it will point to us, it will prophesy, I mean, um, Isaiah prophesies about his birth, not just his birth, virgin birth, <coughs> about his character, Jesus' character, his life, his death, resurrection, and the second coming of Jesus Christ. So if you were really a scholar of the Old Testament, as a Jew back then, and you really understood what you were reading and meditating and memorizing and so on, surely you know, you know, God has a Messiah coming. But the thing is, there are still many who are blinded that Yes, they agree the Messiah is coming. But when the Messiah came, they rejected the Messiah. Why? Because they think that the Messiah should come reigning and ruling in majesty and evict the Roman rulers and, and so on. How can he come as a baby in a manger? Okay? And as a carpenter. And, and he was stricken. He cannot be. So... That is the spiritual blindness. So what do we know about Isaiah? He was brought up in a royal court. So he got royal blood. Because his father was the son of a king. And his father did not become king. Instead, one of his brothers became a king. But still, that is royal blood. And so, Isaiah was brought up in royal court. Now, why would God choose Isaiah to be there? Why, why not, you know, uh, be amongst the common people? Now, God has His design. God has His purpose. And if He puts you there, it's because He can use you there. And when he plays Isaiah in the royal court, it's so that through him, the word of God can get to the throne, can get to the people who will matter most in running the country, governing the country, directing the country to the Lord's will. So be not shy if God plays you in politics. Uh, but I know that's not my calling, though I am uh, well involved. Like this evening, there is a National Day dinner, Tanjong Paga GRC. So I told Pastor, tonight I got event, I cannot come for evening service. Please excuse me. Yeah. Um, so, some are placed in big corporations, some are put in technology field, some in the medical field, some in the mission field. But you are no better or worse wherever the Lord plays you you just be faithful wherever you are the Lord can use you and so he used Isaiah in the palace he married a prophetess we know he's married because in, in chapter 7 verse 3 in chapter 7 verse 3 then the Lord said to Isaiah Go out now to meet Ahaz, evil king. We'll talk about him later. You and your sheer Jasuk, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field. Your son, sheer <coughs> Jasuk. Sheer Jasuk means what? It means a remnant shall return. A remnant shall return. Now, it can only be a prophetic name. A name as directed by the Holy Spirit for Isaiah to name his son. Because, because, in whatever situation, be rest assured, God will have a remnant remaining. He will keep a remnant. Because at this time, when Isaiah wrote the book, you know, Israel, after the death of Solomon, there was civil war. And it broke into two kingdoms. Northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Northern kingdom 
Israel, they call uh, ten tribes. They were exiled for their disobedience to God to the north, taken away by the Assyrians. And then Judah in the south, two tribes, Judah and Benjamin in the south. And when Isaiah wrote this and spoke this to the people, the Assyrians have already taken the northern kingdom away. You follow me? So all this introduction will prepare you to understand the, the book better. By now, by now, Isaiah is facing and speaking only to the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had already been exiled. And his message to them is very clear. Please repent. Turn back to the Lord. If not, you will also be exiled. And I think that's a good warning, right? If you look here in the whole of uh, Singapore, in the whole of Singapore, uh, from... Uh, Oh, no, from, from uh, say, North Bridge Road side, uh, until Woodlands, uh, all taken away by our northern neighbor. Now only left from South Bridge Road side until uh, MBS, uh, you know. Down there, got a lot of money, right? Uh, financial district. Please behave yourself, because if you don't turn back to God, uh, the rest of you will also be taken by the northern neighbors. Thailand. Yeah, Thailand, maybe, you know. So, what would you do? Well, you know, better repent. But did the people repent? Okay. And God is so merciful. God is so merciful. God gave them another hundred years after Isaiah spoke. Warned them, gave them another hundred years to repent. And they did not. Eventually, Babylon came and they took <coughs> the southern kingdom into exile. That is the stiff neck people. Lesson for us. Lesson for us. Let's not be stiff neck. Anyway, so he got a son, Church Shabbat. So in spite of all this exile and so on, a remnant shall return. God will always keep a remnant. Eight, chapter 8, verse 3. Then I went to the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. That's his wife. Okay. Then the Lord said to me, Call his name Bahe Shal Shalah Has Bas. Wow. Three names, eh? Count him. Or four <laughs> names. Okay. So what does this mean? Speed. Yeah. Speed. The spoil. Hasten the booty. Never mind. We come to chapter 8. I'll give you more. Okay, verse 18. Still in verse chapter 8, verse 18. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Now, how different is he from Joshua who said, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And here Isaiah said, Here am I. And the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders in Israel. We are going to serve the Lord from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Okay, so next, this is the sad part. He died at the age of 120. I think same age as Moses, right? But he was killed. He was martyred. And under the reign of Manasseh, Manasseh was the evil king. The most evil king, the, the last king. Most evil. And he was sawn in two. Okay. If you read Hebrews 11 verse 37. Hebrews 11 verse 37. In this hall of faith, not hall of fame, in chapter 11, in verse 37, referring to the, the heroes of faith in the Old Testament, they were stoned, they were sawn in two. And most scholars will agree, they conclude that it is referring to Isaiah, one of them. 
were tempted and were slain with the sword, and so on and so forth. They were, if you go and study contemporary literature of that time and so on, it is said he was sawn with a wooden saw. Oh. And it is really torturous. Not a metal. I behaving is God. But this is using a wooden saw. And it is sawn. Uh, I think from the bottom to the top. Okay. So it was really, really evil. But he served his ministry faithfully. We will see him when we get there. Okay? Next. I mentioned this quite a few times, and if you go and read commentaries and, and, and your Bible in the margins or, or those notes, you know, they will tell you that the book of Isaiah is actually a miniature Bible. It is a condensed, simple version of the Bible. Now, you think when Isaiah wrote this, uh, when he wrote this, uh, you think he had in mind, you know, I am giving a synopsis of the Bible because the, the Holy Spirit uh, is going to use more than 40 authors, you know, over 1,600 years to, com to, to, to put together the whole Bible. But meanwhile, while I'm here, let me give you a synopsis, a summary, you know, of the 66 chapters. You think so? No, he had no idea of what you know, is going to happen down the road and so on. And what was his role in the entire plan? It is only guided by the Holy Spirit. And so, if you tell me this is not the word of God, but the word of man, work of man, I think you haven't done your homework. You follow me? It is God. Our God is life. And He is the author. So in the Bible, we find that there are 66 books and 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah. And in the Bible, we find that there are 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. You know how to remember that, right? 3 times 9 equal to 27. Easy. Now, then, when you look at this, when you look at this, when you study, uh, but then again, when it was written by Isaiah, it wasn't divided into chapters and verses. It was much later, I think 100, 200 years ago, then the, the people put this into order, easier for us. But now that it is numbered in chapters and verses and so on, then when the scholars studied, then they notice in the first 39 chapters of the book of Isaiah, the theme is like the Old Testament theme. It is about law, about judgment, about punishment. It seems a bit harsh, like bad news. Huh? Okay. But when they go from chapter 40 to the rest of the book in chapter 66, it is, it is taking on the theme of the New Testament. There is hope, you know. Uh, it speaks about Messiah, talks about grace and so on. Very much similar to the New Testament. So you see, even in the next slide I have two distinct sections. Chapter 1 to 39, and all scholars will agree on this. And chapter 40 to 66, two different the Old Testament atmosphere in the first part and the New Testament atmosphere in the second part. But David Pawson put it so well. In simplicity, the first part is the disease. They were sick. The people were sick. We shall read this even in chapter 1 later. They are sick. But praise be to God for His mercy and grace. He provided the cure. And the cure is in the second part. Easy to remember. So if you divide the book Isaiah into two, first part, 
verse 39 chapters, the disease, sick, second part, the cure. The cure. This is also from David Olsen. Part 1, the first 39 chapters, more good news than bad. More good news, no, sorry, more bad news than good. Sorry, I'm looking at the reverse. <laughs> okay, more bad news than good. But in the second part, more good news than bad. In the first part, human activity. In the second part, divine activity. First part, sin and retribution. Second part, salvation and redemption. First part, justice. I want justice. God wants justice. Second part, mercy. Because if He, if he demands mercy, justice, that means uh, for the crime, you have to have a penalty. Someone has to pay the penalty. You have to pay the penalty. But praise be to God, there was mercy. And our Lord Jesus paid the price through grace so that we enjoy the mercy. First part, confronting, very confrontational. Second part, comforting. First part, God of Israel. It seems like everything is just for Israel. So it's not talking about us. But the second part, creator of the universe. We are in it is for us as well. First part, national. Second part, international. First part, God is fire. And then second part, God is father. In a lot of difference. The next one, God's hand in the first part. Second one, God's arm. Can you just imagine? Hand is like slap you, la, you know. Yeah, it's violent. I mean, I mean, since we are looking at this being harsh in the first part, so it is inflicting harm or hurt to you. But the arm is to embrace you, to hold you, to love you. Totally different. First part, upraise to strike. Second, outstretch to save. Not to strike, but to save. First part, curses, and you read woes, woes, woes. When we come to chapter 5, there are five woes. Five or six? Six woes. But in the second part, blessings. First part, strange work. Don't understand. But second part, good tidings. That means what? Good news. Good news. First, Jews. Second part, Gentiles. First part, elder sister. Second part, we are the younger sister. First part, Assyria. Spelling wrong, huh? so David Possum, please go and tell it. <laughs> Assyria. Second part, Babylon. First part, before the exile before the exile of the southern kingdom because the northern kingdom already exiled. Second part, after the exile. First part, present. Second part, future. Okay. So, uh, try and download. <coughs> then you don't need to copy. But if not, then those who got printer help those who don't have printers. And please come back to, to, to these notes uh, on a weekly basis because I do update. I add chapters, sometimes I add notes and so on. Now, so, through it all, especially in the first part, when they were undergoing a lot of uh, challenges, things were not doing, going right for them. Typical. Not my fault. Not my fault. The Jews don't, didn't blame. It is not their fault for their, 
idolatry, for turning away from God, for being disobedient and, and unfaithful to God. But all that is happening, famine, uh, you know, enemies are here and so on, not our fault. They blame God, as we shall see. And then they also got enemies around them. So they got Philistines in the West. You know, Philistines are always like a thorn in the flesh, always coming to harass them until today. Then in the South, they have the Edomites. Edomites like to let Israel people walk in front, then they hit from the back. Edomites, if you remember. Then on the East, you have the Meobites. And we read, we read in the book of Ruha, it is called the wash pot. Is it the book of Ruha? I can't remember. It's called the wash pot, the toilet. You know. How you describe a people? Meobites. And then the Syrians, until today, still the enemies to the north. Today is ISIS. Yeah. Or whoever la, in the north. So they blame everyone except themselves. But God is demanding a change of repentance in them first. You follow me? But that's not human nature. Yeah, you catch your children fighting or whatever. What? No, he's for. He's for. No, no child will say. Yeah. So, why do we read Isaiah? Again, from the book of David Pawson. I bought, I bought all these books when he was here in 2013. I attended his uh, conference up at Changi Cove. Yeah. I think he's towards the last part of his ministry so I don't think he's travelling as much he may not come back to Singapore but you can go to Google go to internet search David Pawson you can find all his teachings recordings and so on. you can buy books so, so why do we read Isaiah? because it is part of God's word so you it is not a buffet don't pick and choose I like John so I read John I don't like revelation, very frightening. I don't like numbers because you know what? I never pass my mathematics. <laughs> Read from Genesis to Revelation. It's all for us. It is a good introduction to the whole Bible. That means if you read the 66 chapters, wow, you have an, an overview of the whole Bible. But in my humble opinion, in my humble opinion, please don't start your first book on Isaiah. <laughs> don't. You start with Mark, you know, you start with, uh, then you go to Matthew, go to Luke, then you go to John. But when you start with Isaiah, it's really difficult. Not easy. You will find, as if you listen to uh, David Pawson, he will tell you, the first 39 chapters, because it was harsh and so on, the the context and the details and the historical background and so on not easy to read harder to read the second part grace and so on, is easier to read for a reader for a student of the bible okay so the first part we will we will struggle together okay and then the second part so it is a good introduction to the whole bible so if you are really someone who is familiar with the word this will be good but please don't tell someone who just received Christ I start with the book of Isaiah <laughs> I tell you after chapter 1 verse 2 he will exit okay. <clears throat> Isaiah helps us to link the Old and the New Testament by showing us how they illuminate each other simple the Old Testament enfolds the New. That means wrap it. The New Testament <coughs> unfolds the Old. And so, there must be some link. And this, because it's Christocentric, it links the Old and the New. Very well. And from this, we get to know our Jesus. He is not just another prophet. He is not just another holy man. 
there were others. There were others. They died, but they never rose from the dead. But our Jesus rose from the dead. Okay? So we get to know this person even as we study the book of Isaiah. And we get a bigger view of God. Because someone, someone is the movie director, so to speak. Someone is planning and orchestrating the whole thing. There must be. It did not happen by chance. So then you know the God of mercy, the God of grace, the God of love. But this is also the God of justice. That means what? He demands, he demands that the sin be paid by a penalty. You follow me? The wages of sin is death. He is the God of justice. He cannot close one eye, close two eyes and so on. He cannot. While He is a God of mercy and grace and love and so on. But He is a God of justice. But He is also one who provided the cure. So He wants justice. He wants the penalty to be paid. And He provided the one who took the penalty. And it's all done. All we need to do is to receive the gift. Which we all did. <clears throat> but there are others who have yet to. So we need to evangelize. Taking this from Charles Swindle, if you can see, Charles Swindle, as we did in the book of uh, Song of Solomon. I, I show you that table. And Charles Swindle, a very good author, this diagram is also very uh, simple for us. So, to summarize in a diagram for what I have highlighted in the introduction. So you see, the first part, first 39 chapters, the, Isaac, the judgment of God. Then in the second part, 40 to 66, the deliverance of God. And within this second part, you will find the supremacy of the Lord, 40 to 48. And then the servant of the Lord, none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. The songs are there, and of course we know this, Isaiah 53. And then the future plan of the Lord, in chapters 54 to 66. And the emphasis in the first part, the law and the judgment for disobedience. The second part, God's grace and deliverance. Comfort, promise, and hope. That's what we have. This is likened or equivalent to the Old Testament, and this is likened to the New Testament. But throughout the whole thing, it's about the justice and mercy of God. There are some key verses, we will come to them soon. And then, Christ in Isaiah. His first and second advent. Advent means what? Coming. First coming and second coming. Are prophesied throughout the book. Child of a virgin in chapter 7 verse 14. And the shoot from the stem of Jesse. In the, who is Jesse? Who is Jesse? David's father. David's father. And God said, promised, that in the line of David shall come a king who will rule yeah, forever and ever on the throne. So, it is from the Lord. In chapter 11, and then the suffering servant in chapter 53. So, <coughs> that, that in short, is the introduction to the book of Isaiah. Are you ready? So take a break first. <laughs>